welcome to the Amy Noel on Dyslexia YouTube channel. I'm so excited to make this video because it's full of important information for parents of kids with dyslexia. This channel is for parents of kids with dyslexia. I have five sons. All of them are on the dyslexia spectrum and three of them have IEPs for dyslexia in school. I am homeschooling right now, but this video is about public school because when schools open up, we'll probably have some of our kids go back. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, like it, and share it with anybody you know who could use the information. My video today is about what schools need to provide for kids with dyslexia so that they can get a free appropriate public education. These are things that parents need to request from the SELPA director who is in charge of special education for their area. First off, I have a message for the schools. We as parents would appreciate it if you would embrace diverse learning. Welcome students with disabilities by your actions and attitudes, i.e. cooperating with parents, teachers learning the best ways to teach those students, and administrators budgeting for what is necessary. I wanna to say today I'm wearing my Dyslexia Strengths t-shirt. It says creativity, big picture thinking, problem solving, spatial and material reasoning, and visualization. I can put a link to these in the description. The first thing that schools should be doing for dyslexic students is universal screening kindergarten through second grade annually for every student. We know that early intervention is so effective for kids with dyslexia and it activates the language centers of the brain. The second thing is teacher training for any teacher that is teaching reading. So that would be kindergarten to second grade and special education teachers. These teachers need to be trained in the science of reading and they need to be trained in structured literacy, which is a term coined by the International Dyslexia Association for a way to teach reading that is systematic, cumulative, explicit, and there's a lot more about it, but I'll put a link to structured literacy in the description. The IDA is really pushing for teachers to get this kind of training in college before they get certified to be a teacher. Third, all teachers in a school district should be trained to recognize and understand dyslexia because a lot of times kids are not diagnosed until high school or they're getting a student with dyslexia and they know nothing about dyslexia. And so they're trying to give them a spelling test every week in 12th grade. That happened to my husband. <laughs> All teachers need to know what dyslexia is, its symptoms, its strengths, appropriate interventions for dyslexia, like structured literacy and assistive technology for students with dyslexia, so that even in high school, the teacher will know what accommodations are appropriate for that student. Fourth, all SELPAs should have a structured literacy Orton Gillingham based program. Ideally, this would be the general education curriculum for kindergarten to second grade. The structured literacy and Orton Gillingham approach to teaching reading benefits kids with dyslexia, any other reading disability, English language learners, and it doesn't hurt any of the other kids. It just makes learning reading a lot easier. Maybe the most important thing you can request for your dyslexic child in the IEP meeting is that they get reading instruction from a structured literacy program from a teacher trained in that program, and the program needs to be evidence-based and research-based, but evidence-based means that there were case studies done. The IDA has a lot of information about structured literacy programs. I'll put a link to a video I made about structured literacy programs. Our school district recently purchased MindPlay, which is an online program, and it's very good. You also need to request that your child receive this program with consistency and fidelity from a teacher trained in that program. Make sure it's a good program, and make sure that they get the program from start to finish because it's a systematic program. Your child needs to move up at his or her own pace and they don't need to be restarting it every year. So a lot of times small group doesn't work for this unless the whole group is moving up together. If you don't see grade levels of improvement within a couple months, then you can request that your child be taught one-on-one -on -one because for some kids, they don't progress in small group instruction. I have seen huge growth in my kids when I worked with them one-on-one -on -one with a structured literacy program versus them being pulled out for special education at school. They really weren't making progress, but they weren't being taught with a specific program either. And the teachers probably weren't trained in structured literacy either. Which leads me to my next point, and this is very important. Every school district should have a certified reading specialist in an IDA approved program because there's all kinds of reading specialists out there, all kinds of reading specialist programs. The IDA has specific criteria 
for what it really takes to be a good reading teacher. Every school district should have one of these so that that employee can go from school site to school site and work with those students who need one-on-one -on -one reading instruction. Last but definitely not least is assistive technology. <laughs> Kids with dyslexia thrive with assistive technology. They need computers, they need speech to text, they need text to speech, they need help with note taking. They can be assessed for assistive technology and you can put that in their IEP. My son's special education teachers that I've worked with thought that the assistive technology portion of the IEP had more to do with kids with autism who can't speak. So when I requested assistive technology, they didn't think it applied to dyslexic students, but it definitely does. It's so important. You can only request the things that apply specifically to your student in your IEP meeting. So that would be the assistive technology, the structured literacy for your child, the teacher training for your child. For the other things that I mentioned, universal screening and the certified reading specialist for the district and teacher trainings, for those things you could have a conversation with the SELPA director. You could probably get other parents and even teachers on board to support your movement. Hopefully these things will be part of education law in the future. Another important thing you can do to bring about these changes is talk to the key decision makers in your LCAP. The LCAP is a United States thing for those of you in other countries. Talk to the key decision makers that write the budget for your schools. The LCAP is sometimes called the strategic plan. Some of what I'm saying might just apply to California, but that funding, at least in California, comes around every four years. And so you need to talk to the people who write the budget plan for the four years. That would include the special education director, the SELPA director, and the members of the Board of Education. Ask them when they're writing the budget, uh, talk to them about these things, show them evidence for all of this. I'll put some evidence links in the description. Again, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.